Hello, warm welcome to you all as we gather together for worship on this Sunday, October 13th, 2024. Just a few announcements for you today. All of this month, uh, we are celebrating our annual Socktober event, where we are asking folks to bring in donations of new socks, which will be donated to local homeless shelters. Socks are the number one most requested item at homeless shelters. And so if you're able to help in any way, you can bring those donations on a Sunday morning or drop them off at the office anytime during the week. There are numerous fundraisers going on right now, as you can see from the information in your newsletter. Uh, so if you are interested in participating in any of those fundraisers, please be sure to get your orders in by the posted due dates. Lois Mann is collecting handmade items for delivery to the hospitals uh, through October 25th. On Monday, October 28th at 9 in the morning, we will be sorting those items so that they can be delivered to the local area hospitals. If you're able to help with that in any way, uh, we would greatly appreciate it. Um, either delivering those items to the, the church that you've been making or storing in your house, or with the sorting itself on the 28th. And don't forget about Scholarship's Harvest Moon Dance coming up on Saturday, November 2nd. And you can again see the information in the newsletter about that. And now let us take a moment and prepare our hearts for worship as we listen to some beautiful prelude music.
We begin our worship this day, our Acceptance Through Accessibility Sunday, with our Accessibility Litany. Gracious God of wholeness for all, on this Accessibility Sunday, when we turn our hearts to welcoming all differently abled persons to your worship and service, we come to you with our entire being and give thanks for your faithfulness, mercy, and love. Lord, how awesome it is that we can gather here today and sing praises to your name and know we are standing in your presence. Lord, I can't stand. I use a wheelchair and there's no place for my chair. It really is great, Lord, that we're able to hear you speak to us through the proclamation of the word this morning. I'm sorry, God, I didn't hear what was said. And Lord, it's so fantastic to be able to read your word along with the lector and to recite the prayers and the litanies. This morning, my vision is dim, God. I cannot read the bulletin. Lord, we really feel blessed that we understand everything that is happening around us in the church in this hour. God, why do I learn so much slower than others? I must feel week after week that I do not really belong here. Open us, O oh God. Make us accessible to your spirit and accessible to all your people. immeasurable grace of Christ Jesus, the rich mercy of God, and the unity of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, increase in us your gift of faith, that forsaking what lies behind and reaching out to what lies ahead, we may follow the way of your commandments and receive the crown of everlasting joy through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
Our first lesson is a reading from the book of Amos. Seek the Lord and live, or he will break out against the house of Joseph like fire, and it will devour Bethel with no one to quench it. Ah, you that turn justice to wormwood and bring righteousness to the ground. They hate the one who reproves in the gate, and they abhor the one who speaks the truth. Therefore, because you trample on the poor and take from them levies of grain, you have built houses of hewn stone, but you shall not live in them. You have planted pleasant vineyards, but you shall not drink their wine. For I know how many are your transgressions and how great are your sins. You who afflict the righteous, who take a bribe and push aside the needy in the gate. Therefore, the prudent will keep silent in such a time, for it is an evil time. Seek good and not evil, that you may live. And so the Lord, the God of hosts, will be with you, just as you have said. Hate evil and love good, and establish justice in the gate. It may be that the Lord, the God of hosts, will be gracious to the remnant of Joseph. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join with me in reading responsibly from Psalm 90. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. Return, O Lord, how long will you tarry? Be gracious to your servants. Satisfy us by your steadfast love in the morning. So shall we rejoice and be glad all our days. Make us glad as many days as you afflicted us and as many years as we suffered adversity. Show your servants your works and your splendor to their children. May the graciousness of the Lord our God be upon us. Prosper the work of our hands. Prosper our handiwork. Our second lesson is a reading from the book of Hebrews. Indeed, the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing until it divides soul from spirit, joints from marrow. It is able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart, and before him no creature is hidden, but all are naked and laid bare to the eyes of the one to whom we must render an account. Since then we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who in every respect has been tested as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore approach the throne of grace with boldness so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus was setting out on a journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not defraud. Honor your father and mother. He said to him, Teacher, I have kept all these since my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said, You lack one thing. Go, sell what you own and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. When he heard this, he was shocked and went away grieving, for he had many possessions. Then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were perplexed at these words. But Jesus said to them again, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were greatly astounded and said to one another, then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, For mortals it is impossible, but not for God. For God all things are possible. Peter began to say to him, Look, we have left everything and followed you. Jesus said, Truly I tell you, 
There is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for my sake and for the sake of the good news who will not receive a hundredfold now in this age houses, brothers and sisters, mothers and children and fields with persecutions and in the age to come eternal life. But many who are first will be last and the last will be first. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Today's gospel lesson reminds me of a story about a man named John who came up to his pastor one day and said, Pastor, now you know that I have been a faithful tither for many years. Even though I have never had much money, I still found a way to give 10% to the church. And his pastor says, yes, John, you have been an example of giving to others. So John says, well, pastor, I've been offered a new job and it pays three times as much as what I'm currently making. And his pastor says, well, that's wonderful news, John. What great news. And John continues, well, yeah, it is great news, but now I have a problem. And his pastor says, well, what's that, John? And John says, well, when I didn't have that much money, even though it was tough sometimes, it almost seemed easier to tithe than thinking about tithing with this new job. It's just so much money. I don't know if I can continue to tithe and and give so much money away. What can I do? And his pastor says, well... Let's pray about it, John. So they begin to pray. And the pastor prays, Dear Lord, we thank you for this new job offer that you have given to John and for the chance for him to increase his salary by so much. And as hard as it will be, we ask that you take back this job offer and let John continue at his old job so that he can continue tithing. Amen. It's funny, but it's not. And it's about money, but it's not. This isn't a stewardship lesson Sunday about giving to the church or giving to the poor. This is a lifelong lesson about getting our priorities straight and putting our relationship with Jesus first. A man comes to Jesus and asks him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? At first, Jesus gives him the legal answer, telling him what the commandments are. Don't steal, don't murder, don't lie, don't commit adultery. Honor your father and mother. And the man says, I've kept all of these since my youth. And the scripture says that Jesus loved him. And it reminds me of the passages in the Old Testament where it talks about how God loved King David because he was a man after God's own heart. Jesus could see that this man was sincere in his desire to have eternal life. And he could see that the man truly was trying to live a good life. And he had come to Jesus to see what else he could do. But Jesus could also see that this man had a problem. Actually, two problems. But they were both tied up together in the fact that the man apparently was very wealthy. The scripture says he had many possessions, and possessions equaled wealth in Jesus' day. So Jesus tells him, sell everything, give all the money to the poor, and then come and follow me and you will have treasure in heaven. And the man is shocked. This is a radical concept. He cannot go and sell everything he has and give it to the poor. How will he fend for himself? What will become of his family? What will become of his standing in the community? See, your place in life was determined by how much you owned. Many people believe that The more possessions you had, the more God loved you 
because God blesses those he loves with wealth and prosperity. Some people still believe that. It doesn't say whether the man has a family or not, but maybe he had a wife and children to think of, and what will happen to them? No, this man can't give up his possessions and sell them all and give the money to the poor. So he goes away grieving, sad, and dejected. Now, let me let you in on a little secret here. I don't think that we are to read the Bible and take everything literally and apply it to our lives. In other words, I don't think that Jesus was telling us today to go out and sell all of our possessions and give the money to the poor. And some of you might be thinking, whew, well, thank goodness for that. So why did he tell this man to do that? Well, because Jesus could see that this man's possessions did two things. One, they stood in the way of his seeing what was really important. And two, his possessions gave him a feeling of power that he could, on his own, save himself and earn his way or buy his way into heaven, into eternal life. Did Jesus really mean for this man to give up everything? Maybe. Maybe not. Because let me let you in on another little secret about the Bible. I think Jesus oftentimes uses a bit of exaggeration in order to get his point across. Look at the second part of our gospel lesson. Jesus is talking to the disciples, and he says that it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than it is for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. Really, Jesus? You could have just said that it was easier for a, a really big man to go through a really narrow door. You know, maybe you would have to kind of turn sideways or maybe scrunch down a little bit. Not too easy, right? But a camel going through the eye of a needle? That's just ridiculous. But maybe that's the point. It is so ridiculous that it's memorable. We get it. Even to this day, we talk about things being hard, like a camel going through the eye of a needle. And maybe that's what Jesus was trying to do with this man. I can imagine a conversation between them after the crowds have all left, and Jesus has a chance to talk to the man alone. The man says to Jesus, Jesus, what you said about selling everything I own and giving all the money to the poor, I just don't know how I can do that. I want to do what you say and trust you, but it's so hard. And maybe Jesus says, I know, but I have your attention now, don't I? You need to understand that it's not up to you to earn your way into eternal life. That is a gift that only I can give you. It's not about your money or your possessions. It's not about your standing in the community, who you know or what position you hold. It's about me, my love for you, and the sacrifice that I'm willing to make for you. Maybe that conversation or something like it never happened. But I can tell you that it happens today all the time. Time after time, I keep having conversations with people who believe that there is something that they need to do in order to inherit eternal life. And time after time, I keep telling them that it's already been done and they can't rely on their own power, on their own possessions, their own place in the community the job they have, who they know, or any of the things of this world. In some cases, it might be good for me to say that they need to sell all their possessions, give their money to the poor, and follow Jesus. But then they might think that I'm with one of those religious cults, and they would miss the point of what I'm really trying to say. 
Each of us is given wealth and possessions as a gift from God. And if you think that you are not wealthy, just take a look around the world and see some of the people, maybe even in our own community, who survive with practically nothing. When we place the value of those things that we own ahead of our relationship with Jesus and our responsibility to our neighbor, then we miss the point too. Jesus loves us. He gave his life for us so that we could have eternal life. That is the point. Amen. And now let us join together in confessing our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Challenged by God's word in Christ, let us pray for the church, the world, and the whole creation. Compassionate God, embolden the church to seek all who are lost, clothe those who are naked, and mend what is broken. May we be generous bearers of your eternal love. God of grace, hear our prayer. Sustaining God, as we approach harvest time, we pray for farmers, field workers, and those who process crops. Keep us mindful of environmental threats to the nourishing food that feeds the world. God of grace, hear our prayer. Steadfast God, inspire, inspire world leaders to share resources and work collectively to end global poverty, starvation, and preventable disease. Direct us to seek justice and equity that all may live in peace. God of grace, hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for those who are afflicted, tormented, grieving, oppressed, and lonely, especially those we name before you now, either aloud or silently in our hearts. Deliver the strength of your love and compassion to all who need it today. God of grace, hear our prayer. Generous God, we give thanks for the first nations and tribes who inhabited this land. We lament the harm done by colonization. Call us to deeper appreciation and care for the languages, rituals, and history of all indigenous people. God of grace, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the membership of this congregation. This week especially, we lift up before you the James Hester family, the David Hain family, the William Hill family, Jessica Hinton family, the Chris Hoagland family, the Carl Holmquist family, and Gary Hordendorf. God of grace, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the prison ministry and the inmates and their families in the Northampton, Monroe, and Warren County prisons. God of grace, hear our prayer. This week we pray for the congregation of Trinity Bangor and Pastor James Thomas. God of grace, hear our prayer. Ever-living God, we rejoice to be heirs of the eternal life made real in Jesus' death and resurrection. We give thanks for saints of all times and places, first and last, who still inspire us to faithful living. God of grace, Hear our prayer. Into your hands, O God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in the saving grace you freely give, both now and forever. Amen. 
Peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share signs of peace with one another. And now, Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. God Almighty, God most merciful, bless you, keep you, and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace, follow Jesus. Thanks be to God.